joined the president of the Salon Football Association, Madam Aisha Yanting. And Kenema also, if they are to reach out of is removed from the from the key, they will be having a very nice community feel. Freetown is facing problem with pitch, with standard stadium, and for well, this only stadium they are using are is the Sakasi. Okay, okay. okay. All the other field they are using their post school, their Tuba Mini Stadium, these are not proper field to be used for a Premier League matches. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you for that, uh uh uh, 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 uh that's 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 commendable for you to bring that to our notice because um one of the things I've been talking about lately, um, I'll come back to the issue of um, um, uh, grassroots development that Adam had talked about. Uh, well, well, in terms of infrastructure, we'll talk about um, the stadium and the lack of proper you know, pitches around the country, um, especially in Freetown as a whole. Uh, it's, it's, it's the next, it should be the next objective in terms of investment for yeah. the, gov the government well, to, course, to yeah. invest in the sports infrastructure in the country because obviously... Infrastructure, even the, the national stadium itself, is almost forty years old. If if not if not forty years old, so it's it's way past its um, it's uh, it's past its it's it's, it's been uh, structured that uh, it's reliable. So it's and, and, we, and, we, and we and we don't and we and we don't want to get it's to that point. Rehabilitation. Yeah, well, they, I understand that, but the rehabilitation is is to me personally, I don't feel like that's that's that's. Uh, uh, that's that's safe uh, because with a structure that old, it, it it's going to take a, a huge crowd for that. There's something bad to happen, regardless of whatever kind of rehabilitation is there's going to. I think basically what needs to happen is there needs to be an investment in the brand new stadium for that country. First of all, yeah, whether it's whether it's whether it's in free, whether it's in Freetown, whether whether it's in Freetown or outside of Freetown, you know. Yes. What I want to put what is also a lesson. Mm -hmm. Eighty percent of people are coming to the national stadium are from the east end of Freetown. So if you are talking about building another stadium, it will be a better place along the eastern Waterloo end. Okay. I mean that that, that that sounds that sounds that sounds, that sounds fine. That sounds fine and fair. You know, uh, only thing is I. Uh, I, I look at the the concept of building a new stadium along the lines of um, when we resume play international play um, and the proximity to the airport. I feel like maybe Lunge area could do well with a major international stadium where uh, people. I mean, it's not a big deal for them to travel and go to to Lunge to go watch a match. You know, it's, uh, for personally, that's how I feel. That's my that's my opinion on that. But um, that's something that could be debated. That's something that could be talked about. But um, yeah, let me go back to to what Adam was saying on the grassroots development. Um, that's a very good, very good point that you that you uh, you brought up there. It's it's important and imperative. Uh, well, but one of the things I, that was brought to my notice when the league started was uh, that the Premier League board has mandated every one of these clubs to operate their own academy, which means they are, they, they are supposed to develop young talents coming up. They're supposed to run their own private academies. Um, to develop new talents coming up, so which means they can recruit kids at a very young age to play for their club and they have to develop them along the way. Kids that will become, I mean, along the way, they will be on the conveyor belt of talents that will basically one day fill the, the spots up that, uh, you know, filled up by, uh, the adults in the position, the, they play in the position they play right now. So I think that's, that's, that's another great arrangement right there by itself. Um, because most of these clubs will talk, will talk about structures and systems. Most of these clubs, um, they operate uh, over the years in an informal way, and they need to understand that this is also, besides the fact that someone may love the sport, but they need to understand also that uh, this is a business as well. You got you got to update yourself and bring yourself up to speed in terms of running a real business, the management and all this stuff and the, the infrastructure that goes along with that. If you want your team... Like the old legendary Black Bull and Lions, now we see these things happening. Okay, the jersey sales and all this stuff is great. But what is important is how do you transcend from this level that you're right now to becoming an elite club that can take on other clubs across Africa and in the world? This is not just about Sierra Leone. You, you can think about Sierra Leone right now as the, the, the primary bedrock of what you're doing. I know it's kind of early to be, to be pushing them towards that, but yeah, that's the, that should be the objective in two or three years. Like I said, five, in five year time, from now, I think, um, in my opinion, I think if, if things go the way they're going currently and the management uh, structures they put in place and, uh, you know, some of the advices that some of us are putting across and listen to, I think we should be, Salem should be, be operating one of the top level 
uh, football leagues in the world, not just in Africa as, as one. We could be to potentially important talents from other countries where players from Brazil, Mexico, and other places could come and play in Sierra Leone. That's not impossible. That's not what. That's not thinking. Uh, you know, too 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 high up there. I think that's something that should be looked at that, down the, down the road. Because the more invo the more we involve outside players from other countries, the more other other countries will be interested in knowing what's going on with Sierra Leone football down the line. Anyway, so. Um, that being the case, we've we've had a, our 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 uh, issue with uh, updating and, and we're so so uh, Adam, I may come back to you before I go back to you, uh, uh, Muktar. Adam, how do you see this? Uh, well, let's talk. To, let's talk about the women's side of the game. Of course, obviously, it's the men that are, the men that are playing right now. We got you know the women issue, and you're a coach. You we coach women's soccer here in the United States. And um, what 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 what's your what's your take on 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 what's lacking right now, and how that could be lifted or elevated to the next level? Well, uh, Leslie, I mean, going back to what we've already touched upon, saying uh, talking about grassroots, mm -hmm. it has to be as well with women. Now, with women, it's going to be slightly different because you may have parents that don't necessarily want their kids going around and playing uh, football because. For them, it's not the, the proper way. It's not the, the most feminine thing to do. Mm -hmm. So with that, if we institute the, the, the sports in the school system and have a women's sports discipline within the school system where these young girls are being are, are going to be able to, to, to play and showcase their talent as well, that's the best place to start. But when we do it at the school system, we cannot just focus on the, the, the game. We have to apply a little mentorship uh, uh, piece to it as well, which will kind of be so. In, in essence, it's not just going to be sports focused. It's going to be personal development, right. sports, mm -hmm. and life as a where we're educating these girls how to play, how to act, how to behave, but yet how to use life life skills that will be beneficial for them for them in the and and the in the business world as well. If they're not going to end up playing, be, be playing. Uh, uh, soccer as a, as a profession, as a profession, right? And we've got to start within the school system and, and lay down this infrastructure and have people who have the, the, the know how mm -hmm. to teach the game as well as the know how to be mentors to these young girls so that they're not going to feel out of place and they, they, their parents are not going to feel out of place either because then they know that their kids are being well looked. After a while, they're learning how to play sports and grow in that domain, and eventually, gradually, then the the, 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 the clubs could potentially have a women's sections as well to to, to tie onto that, mm -hmm. that. That that eventually they'll have they'll create the women league, but it has to start within the school system, get that up and running before we even try to say we need to institute a, a league of some sort. Right. And we, if we have that proper foundation in place with the school system. We can still have these young girls go out and play competitive uh, international match matches, but the focus should not be on us going and competing internationally. It should be setting up the infrastructure and getting that off the ground before we start thinking international. Wonderful! I, I love that. I love the approach. I love the 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 the. the, the the uh how you streamline it from the from the basic development level up to what could be down the line for uh, the country having an elite um um national team uh, for the for, for the women's side and uh, and you and you rightly said it it's got to come from the school system it's got to, you know there there has to be that 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 point of uh uh connection between um the Ministry of Sports, the uh, Serbian Football Association, in the in the school, and the Ministry of Education, and um, that they have to, you know, one of the things. Let me say this real quick, okay? Uh, one of the things I find with most of our sporting associations back home, and and some other 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 African countries, is that um, um, our, our sporting bodies, exact for for example, boxing, for example. Uh, uh, weightlifting, etc., etc. They think their job is just to handle the international side of things, meaning to take people overseas to go compete. Well, no, their job is to actually cut across the spectrum of sports from the very basic grassroots level to the most elite level. It means they Absolutely. are the they are the cheerleaders. They are the the, the 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 ones that are supposed to push everyone from the very basic community level to the school level to the collegiate level, to the semi-pro level, to the professional level. 
That is their job. If you are an administrator that runs table tennis in Sierra Leone and you're not working with the Ministry of Education, you're not working with the Ministry of Sports, you're not operating, you're not trying to operate uh, 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 or working with people who are trying to operate a league, you know, across the country and... Um, means you're not doing your job. Taking people overseas is, is, is a simple part. You know, taking people uh, to represent the country eventually at an international level is obviously the, the, the culmination of your, of, your, of your hard work that you've done, you know, to get to that point. You know, because at the end of the day, you will have so much talent available to pick from that uh, um, it, it will be nothing but uh, an easy selling for you to get the, the right talent, you know, with no politics and favoritism involved to take to the international level and make Sierra Leone shine as a nation. But if you're not looking at your job as an administrator who runs a sport discipline and feel like your job is, so, oh, what is this about going to the schools and trying to get the game in the schools? It's your job to take the, get the game to the schools, the sport to the schools. It's your job to go to the primary school and try to introduce the sport to the primary school, to the secondary schools, and to the collegiate level, try to see if you can get a league set up or, or started. You know, you have your international sports governing bodies that would definitely be willing to work with you. And there's now the International School Sports Federation. I just spoke to the, uh, the president a couple of weeks ago, and they look. these are things that they're looking at. And they want to help to uh, in, in institute some real great uh, 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 sporting culture for schools across Africa, and and and, and Sierra Leone being part of that. So definitely, the, the school at the school the school level becomes very integral in terms of sports development in this case. So very great point. I appreciate that, Adama. And that the, 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 in terms of the parents and the, the involvement of the parents, I I I I have to say. There's much work to be done in terms of uh, involving parents in, in Sierra Leone and letting them know that their kids are uh, involved in sport and they need to respect that, they need to, to appreciate them for doing that because it helps them develop as people, you know. Um, some of us grew up and our parents, most of us, are par parents didn't understand at the time, uh, you know, my dad was very opposed to <laughs> playing sport, but, I, you know, I was a stubborn guy, so I, I did it anyway. <laughs> so, so, but um, we hope that there should be a new culture. We should be able to talk to parents at the national level on the radios, on the TVs, and let them know, hey, if your kid is playing sports, appreciate that and understand that. You know, I know some of them have to go home and they have chores, they have their homework and stuff like that. Yes, that can be mixed. That can be, you know, um, Bless me. yes, Bless me. yes, yes, I'm sorry. Because of the bad, because of the bad. Because of the bad media and the bad publicity in sports over the years, mm -hmm. many parents refuse to align their kids to participate in sports activities. The message is clear. For them, in Sierra Leone, sports is not a serious business. There is no one person you can point, apart from Mohamed Kalon, that is a success story that will motivate a parent to tell his or her kids after school to go and practice sport. Right. But well, well, simply tell his mm. kid after school, take your bag, go for extra lesson. But no parent will tell he or he was he, his kids to go out mm -hmm. and train effectively for sports. I understand that and and, and, and that's, the challenges, that's the challenges sports association are facing, even when the sports association take their events to schools. Example like like golf. The last time they called press conference, they start taking this this game to the school. Mm -hmm. But simply after school, these school people still walk off. They say, "No, mom said I should go. Home. It's time for, for me to go." Home. Then after that, I have to go to class. Well, let me put it this way to you. Let me let, let me let me put it this way to simply you. Not, mm -hmm. sim simply, mm -hmm. simply, what have happened over the years is because of the bad message, the infighting between this association. This message, parents will be at home listening to a sports program. They will refuse to align their kids. to go to any sporting activity. Okay. Mukhtar, Mukhtar, you, you, you are part of the, the sports media space in, 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 in Sierra Leone locally. People listen to your program and people listen to you guys talk about sports all day, throughout the week, throughout the year. Um, but let me say this to you. It is your job. You and the other sports yeah, media guys, it is, hold on, hold on, hold on, please. Hold on, hold on. Muktaro, hold on. This is your job as a sports media person, as a journalist, 
to create the right type of message instead of instead of a